So I wanted to show you this example because you might come across this out there and this is a good way of sort of understanding how websites work and what sort of information you can pull from them and where from. So if we look through this, uh, this site here, you might see there's X amount of products and there's some basic information. But if you actually go to view source and start scrolling down, you're going to find this right here. Now, I've done videos on this before where you seem to have JSON data within the script tags. However, if we look at this one here, this is not valid JSON. There is no, uh, this is not a valid key. So we can't do what we used to do with this and just sort of chop the bits off the end and then um, create a JSON uh, dictionary or create a dictionary using JSON in Python. But what we can do is we can actually manipulate the text lines to actually pull the data out that we're after. It's a bit of a rudimentary uh, way of doing it, but it does work and it's good to know how to do uh, so we can actually work on this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start scraping this site and I'll show you how we go about doing that. So I'm going to copy the URL and I'm going to work with a few packages. So we're going to use requests and we're going to use uh, from selectolax.parser. We're going to have our HTML parser and I'm going to use rich as well. Um, I tend to use rich a lot now just to make the printing nicer with Python. You don't have to, it's entirely up to you. Um, and we'll leave it like this for now. We might want some more. So my first function, which is almost always the first function that I write, is something to actually request the data from the page. And I do it this way because you can then easily chop and change if you need to what program or what library or package you're using to return the data to you. Uh, you can change it you, if you want to use Selenium, we can do that. Or if you just want to make a request or if you want to ditch requests and move over to like HTTPX or something like that, it's easily done. You don't have to write, rewrite a lot of stuff. So we'll say this one, um, we'll call this one request page and we're going to be giving it a URL. Now, generally speaking, I always say use a session object. I'm not going to in this case. Um, I just don't feel like we need to. I'm not going to. You can do that if you want to. But what we are going to do is we are going to have to have some headers and we are going to need to have a user agent that we can then pass with all of our requests. So we'll do a user agent like this. And as always, I'm just going to grab one from here. Just type in my user agent into Google. This one will do us just fine. And I'm going to paste you in here and we'll move this back over. Cool. cool. Then we want to do our response is going to be equal to requests.get the URL that we're going to be giving this function. And we're going to pass in our headers, which are equal to the headers dictionary that we created headers. There we go. Like so. From here, we're going to just return the response out. Now, obviously, we're just wrapping up, wrapping around this, wrapping this around in a function, but it means we can then, you know, easily chop in and out, as I said. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to save and I'm going to format this with rough. And let me go nice and easily. Roughs are great uh, linter and formatter as well as black. Use whichever one you want, but make sure you use one of them. So then what we want to do is we want to actually pass some of this information out. So we'll have a pass page function. This is going to take in some HTML and actually no, this is not this is going to take in the response that we're giving it. Uh, ZZ make this in the middle of the screen. I'm going to say that my HTML is going to be equal to the HTML parser with response dot text like so. And then we can actually do something with this HTML response. At the moment, I'm just going to do pass and then we'll have a main function. And our URL, which is going to be equal to the URL of the page. I'm just going to grab that here. Uh, this screen. There we go. We'll paste him in here. So now we have our URL and we can say that our response is going to be equal to our request page function with the URL. And then we can do <coughs> our data is going to be equal to the pass page function with the response dot just the response. There we go. So we can get the text out. Save. And we'll just pass on the end of this. We can probably get rid of that in a second, actually. And then I'm going to do if name is equal to main. I do this with all of my Python code. Like so. I'm actually going to make the text smaller. Um, it's just easier for me to work with. Hopefully you can all still read it fine. Okay, so we're basically just sort of 
shell fleshed out our kind of like our the our initial script here so i'm going to print out html.css first and i'm going to try and find the what any h1 tag and we'll do dot text like so so this has got a print statement in it this function so we don't need to worry about printing anything out down here so i'm going to save that and i'm going to move over to my other terminal and I'm going to run it with pi main.py and we get some text. So to me this means this shows that this is working. We've got some text from the page so that I know that there is, is a good response. Now it's worth noting here that if you don't get anything back you need to actually investigate what your actual response is. So this response here. So you might want to do something like print um, response dot status code and this will tell you what status code you're getting and you can then adjust what you need adjust what you're after uh, adjust your approach exactly how you need it maybe you need proxies maybe you need some more specific anti-bot techniques which we're not going to cover in this video because this website is going to work for us fine just like this so let's go check out the site again now <clears throat> this is inside a script tag here with the type text slash javascript we want to get all of this text data and then we want to start working with it so i'm just going to copy this and we're going to come to our code and inside here instead of this we're going to say that the scripts are equal to html.css and we're going to say because we want to find every single one script where the type is equal to, I think I copied this. No, I didn't. Uh, well, I didn't. So the type was, what was it? Text slash JavaScript. Like so. This is our CSS selector. If you're using Selectolax like I am, you need to use CSS selectors. This is my preferred way. If you like XPath, you can absolutely do it. What you want to do is you want to end up with a list of all of the script tags that match this uh, code, this uh, script uh, selector here. So we should now get a list of, no, I've got a bad selector. That's because I've done that incorrectly. So this should be script where the type is equal to text dot. What's it face? And again, I've got my is in the wrong place All right so this should be it now okay cool so now we have you can see we've got these node scripts here this is all of the node all of the script tags on this page that matched our selector of type text slash javascript now we're only interested in one we're only really interested in this one because this is the only one that's got the data in that we're after so how do we go about getting that what i always tend to do is i look for some text within this and i would just search for it so we could say hey this, this one's only ever gonna have this piece of text in, so we can search for that. I'm gonna do items, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna come back to our code, and instead of printing the whole thing out, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do for script in scripts uh, dot, <coughs> scripts, then we'll do if uh, we need to say items, was it items or item, items, in script dot text like so we will just print out our script dot text so we're basically saying if you find the word items within this text within this script tag just give me all of that data so let's try this now cool so you can see here is all the information that we've been looking for you can just see it starting to come up here so now we know that we're in the right place how are we going to go about passing this data so as i mentioned at the top of the video this isn't actually valid json because it doesn't have the quote marks around the keys it's not it's not correct it's not going to be able to be loaded into any kind of json parser or anything like that we're not going to be able to use json which is what i would tend to do to do so but we've got a couple of options so what we could do is we could write regex to find every key and wrap it in quote marks then chop it up and then put it into json that is a valid approach or what we're going to do is we're going to grab all of the text as a string as a text string uh, from here and then we're going to go line by line you can see they're all split by lines 
And then we're going to find anything that matches this information and we're going to pull it out that way. I think this is going to be, <clears throat> it's a little bit more convoluted, but we're basically doing what we can to get this data. I'm also going to do split on this because you can notice here we have the brackets where it's split out. So we can actually then split on chunks so we can go through it. So you'll see what I mean as we get going. So I'm going to leave this here and we're going to write a new helper function and I'm going to call this one handle text. And this is going to take in a chunk of text that we're going to be working with here. The first thing that I want to do is I want to create a new blank dictionary because we're going to be creating a dictionary for this data. So we want to be able to have it in a structured format. Now we want us to define the keys. Now the keys are basically going to be obviously the keys in the dictionary, but it's also going to be representing to what piece of data we want to get out. So for every key that we give it when we go through a line we're going to be saying hey does this match does this match does this match does this match then we can pull that data out so essentially these are our keys that we want to grab i'm just going to do some of them for now so you get the idea and we'll do uh so this um description so script description and we'll do color And unit price will do fine. Unit price. I think there's a brand as well. Brand. Okay, cool. So we're starting to say these are this is other keys for our dictionary that we're going to be using to create. So now we want to be able to go through and we want to loop through every line within this chunk of text that we're giving it. So we'll say for line in chunk dot uh, split lines. Let me move this up into the middle so we can see. So we're going to say for every line that we're going through, we want to do if line dot split, and we want to split it on the colon. So this is going to be splitting here. So we're doing on my line, we're going to split on here. So we're splitting it here. So we basically have this piece of information and then this piece. And we want to index the first because when you split, you get a list. And then we want to do strip so we can remove any extra white space. And we want to say in keys. So we're saying every line that we go through, we're going to split it into our list on the colon, we're going to take the first element from the list, strip it, and if it is in our keys, we're going to do something with it. So we can say our line data is now going to be equal to uh, line dot strip, and then we want to dot split because the first thing, with the first split we were doing was to check to see if the key was, uh, see if the data, see if that key was one, see if that, <laughs> so the first split that we did was to see if that line held information that we wanted based on our keys and now we know that it does we can say product and now we can our uh, key for our dictionary is going to be equal to line data the first index because we split it i'll do dot strip again strip and that the, key, the uh, value for this key is again our line data and this is the next index over so the next part of the the, uh, the list and i'm going to do dot strip and i'll do dot replace and we'll do backslash and we're going to try and replace a load of stuff here as much as we can and dot replace comma as well so i've replaced a load of stuff here and then we're basically oh i don't want that and uh, we're basically doing that so i've done the dot replace i'm just going to format this so it's a bit neater so basically we're taking two, so we're getting through each line. Let me go back to the code. We're going through each line. We're splitting it on the colon. This becomes the key of our dictionary. This becomes the value. And I'm removing the quote marks because we don't need those. We're going to have those. And I'm also removing the comma because this is part of the text as well. So that's why I'm doing the replacements here like so. So now we've done this, we want to be able to just return out our product dictionary. So this should then have what we want. So if we come back to our pass page function, we need to now change this. So I'm going to say that our um, text data is going to be equal to our scripts.txt. And I'm going to do dot split here. We want to split it on the opening uh, uh, parentheses, the opening bracket here. We're going to split it here. So we're going to have end up with a load of chunks of data, which we can then pass into our handle text function up there. So this is going to return us a list. So we can just do for item in text data. And I'm actually going to make this a generator function. So we'll yield handle text with the item. That's a kind of a bad name. So we'll call this one text chunk. 
like this, text chunk. Cool. So I've done quite a lot here. Um, we'll need to change this actually. We wanted to change this function as well before we go ahead and um, figure out what I've broken and what I've done wrong. So because our past page is a generator function, we want to loop through it. So I'm going to do four products in past page, giving it the response. And we're just going to print out the product here. Product, not property. Cool. Now I definitely imported os.walk, which I don't need. So now I'm going to do rough format everything. And we we're going to come over to our other terminal to clear this up and we'll run it and we'll see what happens. We did it. So I didn't do anything wrong. I got it all right first time. And you can see that we've actually ended up with neat dictionaries with just the keys for the data that we actually wanted to pull out. So this is a really kind of cool way of sort of handling data that does kind of structured but isn't good enough for JSON. When you can start to think about how you can manipulate text using Python and start to construct things like the dictionary that we want for all of the information. Now I'm going to leave it there for this, but what we would want to do to expand this is to add in the pagination. You can see that I've got and from is equal to one here. We can change that and add in some categories. So if you're interested in that, go ahead and get this out and, and then build upon that. And maybe if you're interested too, go ahead and take out requests, put HTTP, HTTPX or something else in like that. But uh, basically it was this that I was really wanted to focus on of how we can identify where the data is on a page, what, how it's structured and how we can easily pull it out in the best way possible. So thank you very much for watching. If you've enjoyed this one, like, comment, subscribe. That really does help me. Also join the Discord. There'll be a link down below. We're almost a thousand members. Can't believe it. So much going on. It's great. It's fantastic. Thanks to all that are in there. Thanks to all that contribute. And uh, yeah, cheers guys. I will see you again in the next one.